Hey boys and girls, welcome to another restoration video. Quick thank you and welcome to all the new subscribers. Appreciate you guys joining the channel. So the first original Xbox I've ever owned is the unit that I restored last month. And since then, I've spent many hours playing some of the classic masterpieces that made the Xbox the great system that it's become today. I've been itching to build a modded system for a while and fill it with the entire library of Xbox games. And this project's gonna be my first step in that direction. So the latest addition to my collection is another parts Xbox from eBay and this one was $26 shipped. And the listing said the unit turns on and off by itself. I think I know what the issue might be but we're gonna have to open it up and take a look. The power button doesn't work and I can't test if the drive is working because when I hit the eject button, it just shuts off. Let me unplug it, plug it back in. Turns on by itself. I wanna see if the drive is working, so I hit eject and it shuts right off. Enjoy the show guys, and if you like the video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I put a tremendous amount of time and effort into making content I think you guys would enjoy, and your support means more than you know. You're going to want to inspect these three outermost traces if your Xbox has similar power issues to mine. There needs to be continuity between this area here and that top part on the right I just pointed to earlier. You want to check the right side of that lower right capacitor with the lowermost via on the top right there. And I'm not finding continuity here. Looks like the middle trace is good, but the lower trace is broken as well. So I have two broken traces here. There's a bunch of close-ups in the upcoming shots, so you guys will see exactly what I'm talking about here. You're going to be on the lookout for any obvious pitting or break in the trace. And there's a pretty sizable pit right here. The idea is that you expose a little bit of copper to the left and right side of the problem area. Okay, I have continuity all the way up to the left side of the pit but I still don't have continuity between the right side of the pit and the destination via. Let me expose a little bit more copper to the right. Now there's continuity between my work area and the destination via. Here's a zoomed out view. No continuity between the lower right capacitor and the destination via. I do have continuity reaching the left side of my work area and I also have continuity from the right side of my work area to the destination via. That takes care of the top trace, we've figured out where the problem is and we'll fix it in a minute. Let's follow the same process and find where the break is on the bottom trace. The 
this could be a problem area. I'll scrape this section off. And a bigger pit towards that corner there. I'll definitely need to take a look at that. Turns out there's no pitting here. I have a full line of copper. The problem area was that corner trace a little further to the right. We're good here, all the way to the end, but at the very end of that corner, I lose continuity. And then from the right side of the corner, all the way to the destination, there's continuity. And here's a zoomed out view for this trace. There's no continuity between the bottom via and the destination via on the top there, but we have continuity up to the left side of the pit. Then we lose it and we have it from the right side of the pit to the destination. I do want to thank you guys for the suggestions that you leave on my projects. The way I've repaired this in the past is by installing a bodge wire from one via to the destination. And a viewer on my last Xbox project suggested the approach that I just showed you here, finding the trace and bridging it for a much cleaner result. I'm all about improving my craft and this is so much cleaner from installing a bodge wire running halfway across the board. You want to use good quality flux and solder. The bargain bin stuff just isn't going to work on something this small. I tried my best to bridge this pit using just solder, no wire. So you guys are going to see me fumble with that for a minute. Maybe the pit is just too large relative to the size of the trace, I don't know. But I wanted to leave this footage in here just in case I was doing something wrong and someone out there could point that out. I tried this a few times, cleaning up the area and reapplying flux in between each attempt but I end up making the connection with a short strip of solid core wire, about a quarter inch long. And we have continuity and no shorts nearby. That arm I created for myself is barely hanging on, so I'm easily able to break this off. Careful anytime you apply force to a solder joint, you could rip the trace right off and make it even worse. Final check to make sure all three traces have continuity and none of them are shorting any of the adjacent traces nearby. We are good. Okay. Oops. Uh, let's take this thing out of the way. I should probably have this somewhere a little bit more level. Okay. Drive spinning up. Drive's working. This is awesome, guys. Chiming in from the future, I'm not one for big overreactions on camera, but to say I was excited here is an understatement. All right, I'm gonna play for about half an hour or so, make sure the power issues are resolved, and then we'll take it from there. No problems at all during the half hour of gameplay, time to move on to the thermals. The whole board's a little bit warm to the touch, so hopefully it makes removing the heat sinks a little bit easier.
and just want to share some learnings from my own experience. All the videos I've seen seem to remove the heatsink bracket with some sort of tool. Don't do it, just use your fingers. All right guys, we fixed the board, applied new thermals, greased up the drive. Now it's time for the mod chip.
Well guys, this Xbox is repaired, it's hard modded, and it's running cool and quiet. But we're not done yet. We need to upgrade the stock hard drive, flash a newer mod chip firmware to recognize the large drive, and I may or may not have a terabyte or so of Xbox games currently downloading. But this video is a lot longer than my regular uploads, so please subscribe if you haven't already, and come back for the grand reveal.